بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نشر الدين توسي after talking of seclusion, of reflection, comes to the issue of huzn wal khawf, grief and fear. Now we need to put this into perspective and then discuss the fullness of this particular issue. We are talking about emptying the soul so that the soul becomes receptive to empty it from distractions, to empty it at a second level from our own intervention, to allow things to suggest themselves, and for us to find a deep sense of realization within ourselves through those suggestions. And as the Quran says, the people who remember Allah sitting, standing, lying down, and who reflect in the nature of the heavens and the earth, and suddenly there is enlightenment, and they exclaim, Rabbana ma khalaqta hada batila. O Lord, you have not created any of it in vain. Now, that moment of enlightenment is not an intellectual enlightenment in the sense of the enlightenment of a philosopher. This is something that is experiential. It is realized. It is felt deep within. And there's deep sense of recognition. Now, in line with this, keeping this in mind, within this perspective, then we look at Hosen and Khov. Now, we have to look at it at three different levels. Uh, Tusi discusses it off sort at two levels, but we need to actually discuss it at three different levels. The first one is that in order to motivate the soul, the soul needs to look at the past and find a sense of grief at the opportunities that have been missed. Now, why is this a natural outcome of this stage? Because when the soul begins to receive those loftier meanings and the realization and enlightenment increases, there is this grief that I have actually missed out on so much. So there is this grief. Now this grief is there only to motivate us to not to waste any more time, to spend our time prudentially going forward so that we may not miss out on any other opportunity. So therefore, if we are in seclusion, we practice this seclusion in a very disciplined manner, we don't fall away, we don't uh, fall down from that state, we don't slip away, and we don't fade away. We actually maintain it. More than often what happens within our human condition is that we resolve to do something, and we almost get it there. Then our humanness kicks in, and we become slack, and we let it all fizzle away. So we find these peaks and troughs. We go and then we fall. We go and we fall. But overall, if we look at the curve, it's a curve that is ascending constantly. However, we find this in our human state. This is what the people said to the Blessed Prophet. They said, or the companions, they said, when we come into your company, we find that our souls are refreshed and purified of all ills. Yet when we move away, away from you, we find the pollution creeping back in. The Prophet smiled and he said, well, this is what life is all about. However, for a person who seeks spiritual purification, <clears throat> they need to arrive at a level where they remind themselves that I cannot let go of this particular stage at which I am. So therefore, to actively feel this grief of the loss of opportunity, what that will do is it will increase the resolve to uphold it religiously. 
fear is for what is to come. Now, fear here is, at a very mundane level, fear means the fear of chastisement, of the events of the day of Qiyamah. And it is something to be feared. We cannot be complacent about this. Allah says, on the day when it shall be seen, women will miscarry their children and they will not be aware. The fright of the day will be such that man will be seen as if they are drunk. Nay, they shan't be drunk. They shan't be intoxicated. It will be the terror of the day that will grip them. A day in which a man shall flee from his spouse, brother, parents and children. Everyone will have some score to settle with everybody else. It will be a very horrifying day and not a day that will be a pleasing day. Now, the soul at this point still hasn't arrived at a point of stability. So it needs to remind itself that I have to work hard to get to a position where God says, that the intimate friends of God, they have no sorrow, nor any fear. But I have fear right now. I don't feel that I'm in a state of, safe, state of safety or amnesty. So I need to work. So at a very mundane level, grief and fear are there to keep us on the straight and the narrow. By the straight and the narrow here, I do not mean obedience of Sharia and the formalistic acts of the Sharia. They, that goes without saying. What I mean here is to keep us on the path of seclusion, remembrance of Allah and reflection. So the soul may feel a much finer, a much refined state. Now, if a person at this level is incapable of doing this, then that person needs to be reminded by himself or herself that, look, there is urgency about this matter. You cannot become heedless of it. Your exam is tomorrow. You need to be worried about it. You have spent your time without studying. Tomorrow, you are bound to fail. Be afraid of it. And if you fail, you've lost everything. There is urgency about it. Do something. But you see, unlike the physical example of the world, where we are possibly doomed if we don't study for a whole year, in terms of the exam with God, it's very different. God can switch everything within an instance. And that's the beauty of our Allah. He's a parental God, a benevolent God. He loves us more than we love ourselves. It is in his, and if I can phrase it in this way, it is in his interest as the parent of humanity that we succeed. The, the angels did say to him that this venture of humanity is going to be a big failure. He said, I know what you know not. In spite of their propensity to sin, they are capable of bringing about something wonderful. At that point, we find a hadith in which shaitan asks for respite and asks for offsprings and asks for abilities to penetrate within the soul of the children of Adam. Adam said at that point, oh Allah, what do I have? God said, I will forgive every sin at any point whenever you turn to me. Adam was pleased with that. He said, yes, that is enough for me now. So unlike a physical exam, this particular exam, we can pass even at the last moment. However, the Quran says that there will be no forgiveness for a soul that has not tasted faith until death comes upon it. Nor will increase in faith be accepted at that point of tasting the death. Now, of course, Allah overrules that as well by other verses. But we need to remind ourselves or anybody else who is not very serious about the opportunity of life, that look, there are these dangers that await. That is the very mundane level of husn and khawf. At another level, husn and khawf are states that come upon the soul at this level without us realizing the cause for it. At the very mundane level, we are inducing them rationally by thinking about them intellectually. We induce this state within ourselves that the danger is very real, 
the opportunity has been missed. But at another level, we just feel these premonitions. We feel fear. We feel grief. If it is unsettling, then at that point, we should know that it is not a good state to have, to try and snap out of it, to try and do some meditation, some dhikr, to meet with friends and family in order to get rid of it or to pray to Allah. At times, that deep-seated fear that comes inside is a premonition of something that is going to happen. At this point here, we are supposed to turn to Allah and say, Allah, but everything is controlled by you. When you are my God, why should I pay heed to this inner fear? Oh Allah, whatever it is, resolve it, take it away, or allow me to accept it. But if we feel inner state of grief naturally, then that is sometimes a bestowal from God to feel that grief so that the heart may lose the love for the world, provided it is not a state of depression. We need to be very mindful of how our minds are and what state we are in. There, is a, there are distinctions between what comes from God and what comes from psychological imbalances within us. So we would have to assess that constantly. At a very fine level, at a very fine level, Oh, by the way, at this level as well, the Quran says, Shaitan yukhawif awliya'ahu, that Shaitan causes fear of his, uh, causes fear to his followers. Now, there is this fear of that. There is So these sort of fears are not good ones. They're not settling. So we need to turn to Allah. Or fear of loss, or fear of what exposure or whatever there is. But at a very fine level, Hosen and Chauf actually come into the finest states within the soul. Because regret here is not imagined anymore. It's not induced. It is the regret at not loving Allah enough, of not being with God enough. It's like the regret that we have when our mother is dying that I haven't spent quality time with her. It is not the regret, it's the grief of not giving enough of what was deserved. Allah says, Ma qadarullah haqqa qadri. They have not given Allah his worth. So grief at that point becomes that sort of a grief, a very profound state. And in that state, the heart melts away in front of God and we are very apologetic. We're saying, oh Allah, forgive me. I have not given you your right. I've spent the time that you gave me in being concerned about everything else that you were controlling, that was in your hands, that has always been in your hands for trillions of years and billions of years that you have meticulously controlled, which wasn't in my control in any case. I was supposed to give my quality time to you, which I missed out on. I'm so sorry. And the fear here is not the fear of chastisement or of hell. The fear here at this point is best described as being in a state of awe by observing the majesty of God. This comes only when the heart is emptied of other than God and the truth begins to suggest itself that when we see the majesty of God, we tremble in awe in our state of nothingness. That is indescribable by words. It is something that can only be experienced. As a youth falls in blind, passionate love, and he says, you do not understand what I feel. It is something like that. It is an experiential thing. But here there are two concomitant sort of states that come upon us. One is the awe in the presence of the majesty of God. And the other is the softness of love that comes in the splendor of God and the love of God. Now, when we talk about the majesty of God, we are told that from his 
single ray of majesty, the inferno of hell has been kindled. So you can imagine the majesty of God, how majestic this God is. And that is why the Prophet says, he who fears God, no fear touches that heart because they're in the majesty of God. Now, at that level here, what happens to the other fear and the other grief? Allah says, his only ya have no grief and no fear. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this point changes all the past evil deeds, disobedience and missed opportunities into positives. It's amazing that with God, the opportunity never goes. As soon as we turn to God, every single second of the past missed opportunity is regained. Every sin, every transgression, every disobedience is put right. Allah says in the Quran, for these people, we will convert their evil deeds into good deeds. It's amazing that the soul stands at that point, looks back at the life and says, Oh Allah, what am I to say to you now? Should I ask for forgiveness for all that I have done? Or should I thank you? For if I had not done all of that, I would not be here today. You made every one of my mistakes, transgressions, sin, a pathway for me to yourself until you brought me here. It's amazing the way things happen with God. So even though examination is tomorrow, the moment of death is tomorrow, today is the time when the soul can turn to God and he changes all the past deeds into good deeds. So Allah says, In awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. On the day of Qiyamah, illa awliya Allah. Except for the awliya of Allah. Now think about this. Why would anybody want to flee from his mother and father? Why would anybody want to say to Allah, as the Quran says, throw the whole of mankind, including my parents, brothers, siblings in hell? and save me from it. Shouldn't we be far more dignified than that? That dignified state comes only when the light of God prevails upon the soul. So the soul has lost bodily fear of hell and have gotten safety and amnesty with God. Only when the soul reaches that peak of enlightened state with the light of God, that they are no longer governed by the bodily, no longer do they tremble in the fear of hell, but they tremble in the awe of God instead, where God says, these are the most dignified people. They will not say, Allah, throw my mother therein. They will not flee. No. These are people who will instead say to Allah, I am at your mercy. The indignity of asking you to punish others is far worse than tasting hell for me. And that state of mind has come through your presence and enlightenment. So we see on the day of Qiyamah that whilst everybody will be trembling, the Prophet will be saying, Oh Allah, save my Ummah. In any case, that final level of khawf and huzn is nothing to do with the fear of hell or missed opportunities. It is to do with not loving Allah enough and it is to do with trembling in the awe of God. I will um, stop there.